Good morning, Creative Church. How you guys look wonderful today. Father, we just thank you that this is the day that you have made. We rejoice. We're glad in it. We're, all, we're honored to be in your house today. Lord, I just thank you that you'd open up our hearts and our ears to receive a word from you today that will challenge us, that will change us, that will help us be more like you in everything that we do, whether it's in our uh, career, in our business, in our life, in our homes, wherever it may be. Lord, we just thank you that your presence fills this room. Lord, we thank you that your, your healing power fills this room. Lord, I just thank you that there's anyone here in the room today that's sick in their body. Oh, we don't need to wait till the end of the service. Well, I sit through the whole service in pain if we can just be healed up front. So, Father, I just thank you that you go ahead and uh, flow through this room with your healing power. Lord, I thank you. Uh, someone's left sciatic nerve right now. They've been sitting here with pain this whole time. Lord, I just thank you that, Lord, your healing is flowing through their body right now. Lord, I thank you that uh, it's a... Uh, it's a gallbladder. You've just got some reports from your, some with your gallbladder is not functioning correctly. Lord, I just thank you that you're healing gallbladders right now. Lord, I thank you that you're realigning uh, bones and backs that are causing migraines and headaches. Lord, I just thank you that we don't need to wait till the end of the service. We just receive right now your healing. So, Father, we thank you that we can just enjoy the rest of the service pain-free. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, go ahead and receive that. You can be seated. Good to see you this morning. Always good to be at Creative Church. And uh, always awesome to see. We love your pastors. How many are thankful for Pastor Jonathan and Joanne? Uh, just some of our dearest friends, as Pastor said. We're, we're awesome. honored to have him. I was just checking in on our first service back in Detroit and in Louisville. And uh, he's speaking uh, for our churches there, and so we're just uh, honored to have him. And I know they're uh, all leaving thinking, gosh, we're horrible parents. <laughs> I know he's teaching on parenting, and tonight we're doing the parenting seminar there, so it's going to be phenomenal. And, uh, and so we get, to, we get to be here with you guys today. So tonight's going to be awesome. I'll talk to you about that in just a second. But man, so many exciting things happening in the life of church here at Creative, and John Maxwell's coming. How incredible is that? 20 years celebrating all that God's done in 20 years. I, I'm telling you, don't miss uh, any opportunity you have to be in John Maxwell's presence and to hear from him. It'll be powerful and life-changing. Uh, he, he told me the other day he's written, he's sold now 36 million books. It's pretty impressive, 36 million books, and that's why I love to partner with him uh, together, him and I now have sold over 36 million books, and uh, it's, it's pretty incredible. So uh, uh, it's, it's awesome. So if you want to hear from someone who's been part of selling 36 million books, come back tonight, 5 o'clock, uh, and it's going to be an amazing time. We're going we're gonna to learn a lot together. I, I was watching a football game uh, yesterday. It's football season, and uh, uh, I know you guys are doing awesome. Hey, listen, I'm from Detroit. We finally have something to be happy about. Come get, give me a break. But um, uh, I was watching the game, and it was, it was the fourth quarter, and this team comes back in the fourth quarter and scores more points than they did the whole first three quarters. And they end up winning the game. In the last quarter, they do more than they did the whole first three quarters, and they win the game. How many have ever seen a game like that? Yeah. Uh, uh, now, unfortunately, it was the, not the team I was rooting for. But anyway, that's beside the point. I thought, man, here we are, August, October the 1st, the very beginning of the fourth quarter of 2023. How many still believe God could do some great things for you in 2023? How many still expecting God to do some good things? And in the fourth quarter, here we are, beginning of the fourth quarter of this year, and I believe we're going to see more people say yes to Jesus this last quarter than we did the whole first three quarters of the year. I believe God can do more in our church the last quarter than he did the whole first three quarters. I believe he can do more in your life the rest of this year. Matter of fact, say this with me. Say, the rest of my year will be the best of my year. I just believe God still got, how many got some things you've been praying for this year that you haven't seen happen yet? 
Guess what? This year's not over with yet. There's still time for you to come back in the last quarter. One more time, say the rest of my year will be the best of my year. Now, if you've heard me before, you probably said the rest of your life will be the best of your life. But I really want to focus today. Today, I want to kind of work on an area of your life and your mindset this morning. And then tonight, we're going to come back 5 o'clock for about 90 minutes. Not for everybody, but uh, there's, there's, there, here's who tonight's for. Anybody, any business owners, entrepreneurs, business owners in here? Let me see your hand. Okay, good. Quite a few. Good. Anybody in sales? Anybody do sales? Sales? Okay. Uh, managers. Any managers? Anybody in management? Okay, good. Um, job. Anybody got a job? <laughs> you are the ones that need to come. If you raise your hand for any of those, I would be here tonight. Rearrange your plans. Change your schedule. It's going to be an incredible night tonight where we're going to talk about some principles. T- today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about your thinking, your mindset, kind of getting us ready to really believe. Because of a football team, you got to get them to believe they can come back before they can come back. It, it starts with a mindset shift, right? And so then there's, then there's principles and things. And so today we're going to talk about that. But tonight we're going to talk about some principles. There's a big difference between the person of Jesus and the principles of Jesus. The person of Jesus prepares you for heaven. The principles of Jesus prepare you for earth. There are ungodly people who use godly principles, the greatest success principles in the world, whether it's negotiation or time management or any of those, they all come from the Bible. I I was on a tour for several years called Get Motivated, uh, and I was on tour with the guys from Shark Tank. Anybody ever seen that show, Shark Tank? And and there's one of the guys on Shark Tank, his name is Damon John. And Damon and I were talking one day, and and he was talking about how he started this company called FUBU. And uh, when he started the company, he wrote down all of his dreams and and goals of uh, what he wanted to accomplish. And I said, wow. I said, that's in the Bible. He said, when you write down your goals, you dramatically increase the likelihood of accomplishing them if you'll just write them down. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about planning tonight. But uh, I said, well, that's in the Bible. He said, that's not in the Bible, writing down your goals. And I said, of course it is. That's why I showed him Habakkuk chapter 2, where it says, write the vision, make it plain so you can run with it. He said, that is in the Bible. I said, all this stuff's in the Bible. I said, it's amazing. How many have ever straightened up the shoes in your closet and when you got done, felt like you could conquer the world that day? Let me see your hand. You know what I'm talking about, right? You're like, what else could I do? Let's, let's, let's clean up the, why, why do you feel so good when you just straightened up the shoes in your closet? Because you created order. You create order. God is a God of order. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. So when things are where they're supposed to be, it creates order order. And so that's what you're doing. You did a godly thing by straightening up your closet. So anyway, we're going to talk about some of that stuff tonight. I promise you uh, it'll, be, it'll be worth it. Wisdom, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes that, that using a dull axe, it says this, requires great strength. So sharpen the blade. Has anybody ever tried to cut something with a dull knife? You ever cut something with a dull knife? It takes a lot of work. You work at it, you work at it. And it's like, what in the world? All of a sudden, if you took a little bit of time to sharpen your knife, It'd be like so much easier, right? The Bible said that's what, that's what getting wisdom is like. It's like sharpening your knife. It's going to make things a whole lot easier. And so tonight we're going to get into some wisdom from God's word in the area of success and life and entrepreneurship and all those things. I promise you, you'll be glad you came tonight. One more time, say the rest of my year will be the best of my year. So grateful for your, your church and and uh, all that you do, not just here, but around the world, your generosity makes such an incredible difference. And uh, you're a part of a church like that. One of the, one of the spon- uh, a sponsor thing that we have for tonight is a, a, a ministry that we work with that you guys support uh, called Keep a Girl in School. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that tonight. But it's, it's amazing um, what our, our generosity can do. Yes, your, your normal tithe and offering and giving helps you know, the day-to-day operations of the church, but what you're doing through your generosity and your vision builders is impacting the world in incredible ways. And so thank you for being generous. Thank you for being generous with your resources. Thank you for being generous with your time, those of you who serve. Thank you for being generous with your pastor because there's a whole bunch of people in Detroit today and in Louisville that are being impacted because you're not selfish and you let your pastor go and take a message that God's given them and, and help a lot of other people. So pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for their family and encourage them as they're, as they're out and have opportunities to minister. Uh, there's a lot of pastors that never leave. That's because nobody wants to hear them. 
You have a pastor people want to hear. So thank you. Uh, and, and by the way, don't expect me to be as good as Pastor Jonathan. I don't preach that good. I'm probably going to sit here. And, uh, and, 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 uh, but other than that, you know, there's nothing else alike. He preaches really good. I'm just going to talk to you for a minute. But hopefully you'll get something out of it. I think I am a little han- more handsome than him. But that's, we're not, let's not get into that stuff today. Okay, so each day, each day is a gift from God. When you woke up this morning, had breath in your body. This is the day that the Lord has made, right? You re- every day is a brand new gift, a gift with unlimited possibilities, boundless potential. And you can take that day and you can fill it with sorrow and defeat and, and failure, or you can fill that day with creative activities and ideas and victory and blessings with, with the same bag of groceries that my wife could take and make a wonderful meal with, I could take the exact same bag of groceries and make something that you would not want to eat at all. And every day we're given this day, we're given this bag of groceries and you have a choice. You can make something incredible out of it or you can just try to get through it and hope it works out. Every day has unlimited potential. Could you imagine a church whose members were so blessed, so prosperous, that, that we always had more than enough that we needed, plenty left over, where when people were in need, we were able, they didn't have to go to the government for help. They came to us for help because we were so blessed. We always wanted to be a blessing to others. Could you imagine a church like that? Could you imagine, could you imagine a, a, a church whose members were so wise, so strong in Christ-like character. When, when, when people entered the church on Sunday, this, I never felt anything like this. I never met people like this. What, what is this? What, what kind of atmosphere is this that I feel in this place? Could you imagine a church that was so full of happily married couples, fulfilled and faithful and committed that everybody wanted to know, what's your secret? My son, Solomon, he asked a lot of questions. He asked me one day, he said, Dad, I, I was studying and I, I, I was watching this video and I, I saw that, you know, in some parts of the world, the boys and the girls, they don't even know each other until they get married. I said, son, that is every part of the world. <laughs> um, but could you imagine, right? Could you imagine a... a Families that were so strong, children were so well-behaved, teens were so mentally and emotionally stable and well-rounded. Everybody wanted to, what are they doing over there? Sounds like a, a dream. Could you imagine families like that, churches like that? It is a dream. I believe it's God's dream. It's God's dream for a creative church. It's God's dream for your life, for your family, for your business. I think it is a dream. And with God's dreams, well, here's the thing. God never dreams anything that isn't possible. Because with God, all things are possible, right? How many believe that? How many believe with God all things are possible? I mean, I know it sounds good, but do we really believe it? I mean, I know it's in the Bible, but are we really expecting that to happen? Uh, Today, I want to talk to you about if it's going to happen, it's going to start with your expectation. How do we begin to live that kind of life every day where our businesses are thriving, our lives are thriving, our our homes? How do you live that kind of, I I believe it begins with elevating your expectation. How do you get your expectation a little bit higher than it is right now? Now, I've decided this year to, to live, how many have ever known someone who's a little paranoid? I always felt like people were out to get them. People were talking about them. Do you hear I bet they're talking about me? I decided to live my life as, at the beginning of this year, I decided to live my life as a reverse paranoid. Yeah, I just always feel like people are out to bless me. I feel like people must be talking good about me all the time. Like, I wonder what they're saying good about me over there. I mean, why live your whole life going, I mean, what, what are they talking about me? What if you lived your whole life expecting good things to happen? Maybe things would turn out a little bit different than they do right now. So do you, don't, you don't think people ever talk bad about you? I don't know if they do. I don't want to know about it. I just want to pretend everybody likes me. <sighs> Makes life so much easier, doesn't it? So what if we started living our life with a different kind of expectation? I believe your level of expectation really sets the limit for what you'll receive. Whether, whether the rest of this year or whether the rest of your life, what are you expecting? If you expect little, you'll probably get a little. I mean, we, we can literally, I believe, change our world by changing the level of our expectation because whatever you expect with 
confidence becomes your own self-fulfilling prophecy. Could you imagine? I, I remember seeing a house one time ago. Boy, I couldn't, I couldn't even imagine living in a house like that. And I felt like God said, well, don't worry, you won't. <laughs> like, seriously? Well, I never could imagine having my own business. I never could imagine expanding into, well, don't worry, you won't. If you can't even imagine, if you can't even expect it. What if we started expecting, how many, how many have a hard time, be honest, expecting good things all the time? I mean, yeah, listen, I was born a pessimist. I have to work at this. It's really hard for me. How many, how many have a hard time being positive? Be honest, come on. I, I'm admitting it. Don't point at other people. I mean, even my blood type is B negative, right? So it's... it's it's work sometimes. But here, here's what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 11. Look at this. Let me, let me teach you just for a few minutes here. Matthew chapter 11, verse 23. Matthew 20, 11, verse 23. I tell you the truth. Uh, so, uh, so you can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea and it will happen. But you must, all, you must really believe it. But you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe, say if you believe, uh, that, that you receive it, it will be yours. If you can believe it, you can receive it. That's what the, how many believe the Bible? Okay, about half of you. <laughs> but when you're praying, first forgive in, oh, no, all right, let's just stick with the first part of this verse. You, you got to forgive people that you're holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven, okay, I do want him to forgive me. But let's just go back to the beginning. I tell you the truth, you can say to this mountain, believe in your heart and don't doubt. Be careful. Here's what I tell you to do the rest of this year. Let's just start with the rest of this year. Three months, 90 days. Who can't do something for 90 days? Let's watch our words. Let's watch what we say. If you have what you say, You'd, be a little, you'd think a little different about what you say. You'd start, you'd start watching your words a little bit more. Because if, if you think little, believe little, expect little, pray little, you'll probably receive little, even though God is able to do big things. I mean, God personally is ready to move on your behalf, but you can limit God with your own low level of expectation. I, 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 I'm expecting good things to happen. Solomon and I, my, my son, he's uh, sitting back over here. We were at an Arizona Diamondbacks baseball game. And we got there last minute. We got a ticket last minute. We were up in the third level, way up high. And we were looking down. We were behind home plate, but there were some seats right down by home plate that were empty. And I said, man, Solomon, that's where we need to be sitting. I don't know what we're sitting up here. We need some favor. We need God to get, we need to, that's, we're going to expect to sit down there. We're just talking and uh, literally Second inning, a guy taps me on the shoulder. He said, excuse me. He said, my name's Steve. I'm with the Arizona Diamondbacks. The owner happens to be here tonight. He has a few seats left in his box. He told me to come up here and see if I could find anybody who would, mind, who would like to sit with him. Would you and your son be interested in, uh-huh? <laughs> yeah, we would be. They, they said, well, come right this way. And they took us down and set us in the exact seats that we were just pointing at, saying, that's where we need to be sitting. All of a sudden, we're sitting here with the owners of the Arizona Diamondbacks. We get talking for a few minutes, and the wife says, are you all believers? I said, matter of fact, we are believers. She said, I, I had a feeling. So are we. And so we got talking a little bit more, and she's like, you know, we have these seats. We're not here a whole lot. Anytime you need some seats, you just let us know. We're just talking. This is going great. This is awesome. She takes Solomon and gets him a, a ball, go takes him to the dugout. I mean, this is just going great. Then, then there's some empty seats right behind home plate, the first row. She goes, have you ever sat there? I said, we never sat there before. She goes, you should sit there. There's two empty seats. Go try it. I'm like, if you say so. <laughs> so we're sitting there, right? And there's a, a guy and his kid, and Solomon's talking to his kid, and I start talking to the guy, and he's like, yeah, these are our seats, uh, uh, these four seats. My dad used to own the Diamondbacks. I said, oh, he said, yeah, and part of the deal when we sold the team is we got these four seats for life. I said, huh, um, we should be friends. <laughs> uh, 
And so he said, we should, yeah, and I told him, we had just moved and, and had a place there in, in Arizona. We were helping start a church there in the Phoenix area and uh, that, that, was, that was going. He said, well, here's my number. If you need anything, let me know. And I'm like, yeah, maybe we can get the kids together. Yeah, that's great. So I get home and I call the pastor of the church that we were helping there. And I said, you're not going to believe this. I said, we went to this Diamondbacks game and, and I, met, I met this guy. He's the owner and we sat with him and he'd give us seats. And he said, that is crazy. I said, then I met this other guy that used to be the owner. And then I told him about him. He goes, wait, what did you say his name was? And I told him his name. He said, you know the, the building we have downtown? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, you know how we, we have a hard time with parking at our downtown campus? I said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, they're right across the street is a big parking garage. We've been trying for the last over a year to get a hold of the guy that owns that parking garage. It just sits empty on Sundays. We've been trying to get a hold of him to see if he'd ever let us use the garage on Sundays. The guy you just said you met is the guy that owns that parking garage. I said, are you kidding me? I said, I've got his cell phone number. So I sent him a text. I said, hey, I said, you own this parking garage? He goes, yeah, that's my garage. I said, well, I'm, I'm a part of the church across the street. We need parking. He goes, that, that garage is empty on Sundays. You should just use it. We should. We should. This whole time, I'm thinking, man, God is blessing me. Look at this favor. And then I realized in the end, he was just trying to get parking for his house. And he was just using me to do it, Right? And I, and I learned, I learned in that whole thing, when God blesses you, he's got a lot more than you in mind. God blesses you to be a blessing. And every time you receive blessings, he's just looking for you to pass it on, to be a blessing. I'm blessed to be a blessing. Whether it's our resources or whether it's a connection or whatever it may be. But it started with an expectation. Where was your expectation? Here's the good news. You don't have to settle. For little. You don't have to. If you don't want to, you can start praying bigger, believing bigger, expecting bigger, and I think you'll start receiving bigger. Always dream big dreams. I mean, here's the thing. It doesn't take any more energy to have a big dream than it does to have a little dream. I love what Michelangelo said. The greatest danger for most of us is not that our dream is too high and we miss it, but that our dream is too low and we reach it. What have you had? What are your big dreams? One of my dreams is I want to be on a, a TV, like in a movie, like a movie or be on TV or something. I thought that'd be cool. I thought I could, thought I could do that, right? And so I've, I've dreamed that for a long time. And finally, I'm finally, just literally three weeks ago, I got a call um, from Netflix. And we just did a deal with Netflix just three weeks ago. Isn't that? Yeah. And, um, and it's, 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 it's 14 ninety nine a month for all the movies I can stream, and uh, it 's a great deal i 'm still hoping to get in a movie or something, but but you just you know things happen, and so i don 't know where your expectation is. some of y'all get that later, but uh, if you if you limit your choices to just what you think is possible or, or reasonable, you will disconnect yourself from the desires that god 's put in your heart. We serve a big God. With God, all things are possible. So here's what I want to do in the next few minutes. Tonight, we'll get into principles. Today, I just want to open up your head, like uh, the top of your head, like, a, like a, a hood of a car, and I want to go in there and adjust a few things. Now, when you go into a car, you may be adjusting. I, I don't know a lot about cars, so um, you're adjusting stuff, right? Yeah. How, many know, how, many, how many know how to fix cars? Anybody in here know how to fix cars? Few people. Yeah, some people are like, not me, not me either. But uh, they have carburetors, right? Today I'm gonna work on your expectorator, right? What are you expecting? So I'm gonna go in there, adjust a few things to get your expectation up, believing God to do greater things the rest of this year so that it can be the best of this year. I, I, talking about not knowing much about cars, my, my, uh, one day my, my wife's car wouldn't start. I was in the house, she came in from the garage, she said, honey, my car won't start. I said, oh. She goes, can you look at it? Sure. We can both look at it. And so we were both out there looking at it, right? And, uh, and <laughs> she, I said, all right, pop the hood. Pop the hood. I knew at least I knew that much, right? I don't know what's under there, but she popped the hood, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, all right, try it. Try it again. <laughs> she goes, is it doing it? I said, I don't know. In the name of Jesus. 
this is I don't know what to do about the car. So I, I, I had it towed, right, to, to the dealership. And the, <laughs> so funny. I get there, the mechanic comes out like, he's like, hey, did you check the alternator? Like I'm an idiot, right? <laughs> yeah, of course I did. <laughs> it was full, you know. Um, I don't know where your expectation is, but we're going to work on your expector a little bit today. See if we can get it in, in proper working condition. The first kind of expectation I want to talk about today is not based on external events. It's not based on your circumstances. The expectation I'm talking about has to be an inside job. It can't be on what's happening around you because if, if you have expectations about a lot of things in life, right? I mean, um, expectations about a, a job, expectations about a new car, expectations about a, maybe a vacation you're planning or whatever. Even you may have expectations about what you want for Christmas. But guess what? Things don't always turn out the way you're expecting. How many of you ever found that to be true? How many of you was expecting one thing for Christmas and you got socks? Right? They weren't even the socks you would have picked. You end up getting a tie that you never wanted instead of what you really had in mind. If our expectations are based on events or based on circumstances, we are going to be disappointed. I mean, if we only are in a good mood and have a positive attitude, as long as all the circumstances are favorable toward us, we'll be excited as long as there's a special event coming up. We'll be, we'll be excited as long as the circumstances are working, as long as there's something good on the horizon. But if we're going to make it in life, living a positive expectation life, you can't build your expectation on, on external things. It's got to be built on something inside, an internal relationship. If my expectation comes from my job, what happens if I lose my job? I lose my expectation. If my expectation is on receiving a Christmas bonus and I don't get the bonus, I lose my expectation. What if my expectation is on achieving this goal and I don't get it? Well, then I, I've lost all my expectation. But if my expectation comes from God, then no matter what happens around me or what happens on the outside, I have something on the inside that's expecting because I know that God said all things work together for your good. Everything works together for my good. So if, if I really believe that on the inside, we used to sing a song growing up, I got something on the inside working on the outside. Not something on the outside working on the inside. It's got to start on the inside. My mom had a magnet on the refrigerator growing up, said God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Right? If you got it on the inside, Bible expectation isn't moved by what people say how people treat you. It isn't moved by whether you get overlooked for the promotion or not. It isn't moved by whether the doctor's report is good or, or, or bad. It, it's not moved by that. Delays can't distract it. Disappointment can't overcome it. Discouragement can't defeat it. It is an inside job. John 16, says, in the world you will have trials, tribulation, distress, frustration, Oh, I told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you may have many trials and sorrows. How many have ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence? Anybody ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence? What'd you do when the airplane hit turbulence? Prayed, prayed, held on, buckled up. Did anybody get off the plane? <laughs> like, I'm out. I, I'm not. Mm. No. Yeah, let me ask this. How many of you have ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence and you're still here? Let me see your hand. We made it. We all made it. In life, there will be some turbulence. In life, there's going to be some trials and sorrows. But take heart. You're, you're still here. You're going to make it. Because I, he said, Jesus has overcome the world. It really begins, you really want to see God begin to work on our lives. We got to raise the level of our expectation. Raise the, how many would admit at some point in your life you've limited yourself by your own thinking? Your own thinking has limited you. Yeah, we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, tonight. I wrote a book. And I'll tell you about it. I, I brought some of these with me. This is something brand new we just put together. I, I love this thing. It's called Success Made Simple, and I'll, I'll, I'll teach you about it tonight, but, or tell you what's in it tonight for those. I didn't bring enough for everybody. Um, not everybody's 
into wisdom. <laughs> but there's always a few people that understand how valuable it is because it says it's more valuable than silver, more profitable than gold. But we took six of our top coaching programs, our books with, uh, in this set here, you get six books, six uh, e-books, six audio books, six workbooks, 70-something videos. I mean, it, 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 we take six of our top programs, put it all together. If you buy these all individually, they come in big boxes. And we just had it for, uh, for a thing I did, a, a corporate thing in Sorrento, Italy. We took these big boxes and, and this whole program, I think, I, I think the whole thing sold for almost $10,000 with all the boxes and all the coaching things that went with it. Of course, we, we did it. Uh, uh, an all online deal for churches, and, and, and I'll tell you about it tonight, but it's, it's not that much, don't worry. So a couple of y'all like, I don't have, that's, is he crazy? I know it's church, don't worry, I don't, we won't ask for that much at church. But I'll, tell, I'll tell you about it tonight, though. You, there's always a few people like me that I just want to learn, I just got to grow. Wisdom, the Bible says the principal thing, whatever you do, get Wisdom. So I want to get as much wisdom as I can. So let me give you this, 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 some wisdom and expectation. Because it, what we're talking about goes beyond events and circumstances. It's not rooted in those things. It's rooted in God. It's a God kind of expectation that we see in Romans chapter 4 uh, and verse 18. Let me, let me wrap this up with this scripture here. Abraham. Talking about Abraham. If we could have this kind of expectation that Abraham had for the rest of this year. Even when there was no reason for hope. How many have ever felt like you had no reason to hope? Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would be the father of many nations. Why did he have no reason for hope? Because God was giving, made him this promise that he was going to have children and his children would have children. And he's 100 years old. You read there in verse 19, even though uh, Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though he was 100 years old. You're going to have children. Could you imagine? I don't know how often you hear of pregnancies at the assisted living. Um, <laughs> it'd be pretty shocking, wouldn't it? You're like, people are getting pregnant right and left down there at Horizons. A <laughs> hundred years old, and his wife is 90. He figured his body was as good as dead. We figure that too. But he hoped on, so in the natural realm, Abraham didn't have any reason to have hope. I mean, that just doesn't happen. The, the situation truly looked impossible. How many have ever had some situations that you felt looked impossible? To you, to the natural, it was impossible. But to God, all things are possible. So Abraham hoped anyway because his expectation wasn't based in the natural realm. His, his expectation wasn't based on his circumstances. Abra, Abraham hoped on anyway. He goes on to say, his, Abraham never wavered, verse 20, in believing God's promise. In fact, he grew stronger. Wow. How many of you have ever asked God for something and it took him longer than a week to answer you? Anybody ever prayed for something longer? Anybody ever prayed for something longer than a month? How about a year? Yeah, I got something I've been praying for for like 20 years, and I still haven't seen it happen yet. It'd be easy to go about 20 years. If God can't do it in 20 years, I might as well just get. It says his faith grew stronger the longer it took. How many's faith got stronger the longer it took? I mean, that's what we want. But my goodness, if we're honest, it's got to be hard to keep believing when you've tried. What, but what if you gave up on that thing you've been praying for, and God was going to do it tomorrow? Oh, shoot. Just one day too early. He hoped on, he was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. How many are fully convinced that God will keep his promises to you? I mean, you're fully, that's where it started. He was fully, now I'm not fully convinced that my cousin is gonna keep all his promises. I'm not fully convinced that uh, other people I know may keep all their promises. But I am fully convinced that if God said it, I can believe it. And if I believe it, it settles it. It, it, can't, it can't say it any better than that. Bible expectation is being confident that God means what he says and then fully expecting him to do what he promised that he would do. That's what he said. 
And so, so uh, Hebrews chapter 10, look at this. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. God can be trusted. So my question for you today, what are you expecting? What are you expecting God to do the rest of this year? In your life, in your health, in your business, in your finances. What are you expecting God to do? Your answer is critical because I think your future really depends on it. Because when we have this, when we, when we confidently expect good things to happen, good things happen. We expect negative things to happen. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Your expectations of others, your expectations uh, of your children. Harvard did a study that said that, that families who produced the highest achieving children were, were, were known as positive expectation families. They expected their kids to do good stuff. What do you expect of yourself? What do you expect? Imagine your greatest moments of 2023 have not happened yet. They're still gonna happen in the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter is going to be your comeback quarter. Are you expecting God's favor to come the rest of this year? Are you expecting his healing in your body the rest of this year? Are you expecting uh, uh, pow- him to exert powerful influence over the people and events and the, the things that you face the rest of this year? And did you come to church expecting to receive something from God today? If you did not come expecting, you probably will receive nothing. But where's your, every time you come in the doors, I came expecting God to speak to me today. I came expecting to feel his presence when I worshiped him. I came expecting to to see something change. We're going to receive communion. Uh, You you got the the communion there. We're going to receive communion. I don't know what you expect when you take communion. I don't know. Do you just expect to eat a little piece of bread and a stale cracker and some old juice? I mean, is that what you're expecting? I mean, well, we just do it all the time. It's just, it's just kind of what we do. It just becomes kind of a, a, a ritual, something you do every now and then, once a week, whatever. Or do you really expect the benefits of what happens when you receive this to happen in your life? I don't know what your expectations are. I mean, we say we do this in remembrance, so we're going to do this to remember what God did for us when he died on the cross and, and, and gave his life for us. But... Uh, But really, if if you have an expectation and a real understanding, something powerful happens when we do this. When we take this bread, something powerful is going to happen. When we drink this juice, something powerful happens. It's known as the Lord's Supper. It's the greatest expression of God's love. And there's two elements there. You see the bread there on the top and then that the, the represents his, his body, Jesus' body that was beaten and broken before and during the crucifixion. And then the cup that represents the shed blood of Jesus. You know, when Jesus walked on the earth, he was vibrant, he was healthy, he was, he was full of life, never sick. But before Jesus went to the cross, he was badly beaten by the soldiers, his body was, was torn, and, and he was hung on a, a cross. Think about the price that he paid with his body, beaten. We, we hear the, 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 the story about the stripes on his back by his stripes, but it was way more than just some stripes. Do you understand what they, they used was uh, made of, of pieces of sharp stone and glass and things like that that would not just whip, but would rip the skin and the, and the, and the muscle. And the purpose of it, they, he took to each, each shoulder, they, they said he took the stripes and, and, uh, and, and took the beating. And the purpose was to rip the muscles of the shoulder so that he, he couldn't hold himself up. On a cross, they would, they would push themselves up to get a breath because the purpose of the cross of, of that was really suffocation, that he would, wouldn't be able to pull himself up and as everything collapsed and his, his lungs would collapse and he would suffocate. That was the, the purpose. So the, the, it was more than just some stripes. And when you think about all that he went through, the price that he paid, was for so much more than just our salvation. And I'm grateful and I'm thankful for salvation. But what, he, but, but what he paid and what he did was for so much more. It's that, he, that God, uh, that he took all of sickness and disease. 
when Jesus was on the cross, he took all of sickness and disease and he put it on Jesus. He took on all the infirmity, all the sickness and disease. His originally perfect, healthy body. So why? Why? So that you and I could have health. So that you and I could receive healing. That's why the Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. In, in Isaiah, it says, by his stripes, you will be healed. You are healed, right? But then he went to the cross, and in 1 Peter, now it says, by his stripes, because now the, the cross has been paid, the price has been paid. So it says, now by his stripes, you were healed. That's, that means past tense. That means it already happened. He already paid the price for your healing. Now you receive it. And so as you receive this bread in just a moment, if you need healing in your body, disease is in your body, I receive this bread and I receive the healing that Jesus already paid. I expect, I expect people to get healed as they receive communion. A friend of mine calls it the meal that heals. I don't know where your expectation is. Took the, the crown of thorns on his head. You think of the pressure that must have been as those thorns and blood began to flow down his head, as that, as that crown of thorns went into his head. I think of the pressure that he felt, and then I think of the pressure I feel through stress and anxiety. He paid the price for all mental illness to be healed. We just have to receive it. And then, and then the, the juice here represents the blood of his covenant, which brings forgiveness of sin. So besides being born again in Christ, a healthy body, a healthy mind, are some of the greatest blessings that you can have besides being born again. So communion is, is ordained as a, a, a channel of healing. This moment is a, a time of healing. It's a time of, of wholeness. Maybe you're fighting depression right now. You receive that. His loving instruction is that we would remember right? That we would remember. And so one night after he was betrayed, he got his disciples and they had the, the last supper, right? And as they had the last supper, uh, he, he, he talked about his sacrifice and what, would it, would it, what it would accomplish. And that's what we do today as we partake of the bread. We're declaring Jesus' health and healing in our body. That it would flow through our mortal bodies. We partake of the cup. We're declaring that we are forgiven, that we've been made righteous, that Jesus' blood gives us right standing before God. If you peel back that first little cellophane, cellophane layer, a little cracker in there. And we use bread because that's what Jesus used. I don't think that, yeah, I think it was just bread and wine because they were at the table and that's what they had at the table, bread and wine. If they hadn't had bread and wine, if, if you're from the South, it may, if he was from the South, he may have had cornbread. I don't know. Wasn't the, the, the significance of that. It's the significance of what we partake of and what happens in the moment. Remembering, hey, when you do this, remember. Remember me. Communion is not a ritual to be observed. It's a blessing to be received. We're going to receive a blessing today. And we take that bread. We break it. Just go ahead and break that. Hold it up in your hand today. Father, I thank you. As we come to you today, we remember all that you did for us on the cross. Thank you for loving us so much that you gave up heaven for each one of us. If it would have just been me, if it had just been us, one person, you would have done all this. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for allowing your body to be broken so that ours could be whole. And as we eat this bread in just a moment, we receive your resurrection life, your health, your strength to our body. By your grace, we are completely strong and healthy. All the days of our life, our eyes shall not grow dim. We'll have strength. No sickness can remain in our body because the same power that raised you from the grave is the same power that flows through us. By your stripes, we were healed. And so we receive it now in Jesus' name. Say, I am healed. And partake of that together. Then you peel back that next foil layer. We get to the juice, which represents his blood. Father, we thank you for your precious blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. 
There's power in the blood. Reach us to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. No matter where we go, your blood reaches. We thank you for washing us clean of our sins. We stand before you completely righteous, forgiven. Your blood has redeemed us from every curse. Today we, re we freely receive that blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Receive that together.